Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, so Spam28 here bringing you some more World of Warships action. I'm not going to be saying closed beta action anymore because I don't think that the game is going to be in closed beta for very much longer. I would guesstimate probably just another 24 to 48 hours of closed beta uh, before they flip the switch and go fully to open beta. In point of fact, if you go on the World of Warships website right now, uh, this is uh, June 30th as this video goes up. If you go on their website right now, you should be able to actually register for an account and download the game, even if you don't have a closed beta key. You won't be able to log in and play just quite yet, but basically what they're doing is taking a little bit of time right now just to kind of gauge how many people are going to register and play uh, in the open beta on top of all of us in the closed beta to make sure that they have their server infrastructure fully in place to be able to handle that load. Uh, which I think is, is a pretty good deal. But anyway, on to this video. We're going to be talking about the rest of the commander skills, the tier 3, 4, and 5 commander skills. And then we're going to be transitioning into a little bit of low tier destroyer gameplay, specifically focusing on the Japanese destroyer Umikaze and uh, what you want to be looking to do in this ship and how to utilize it effectively in these low tier matches. Uh, to grind your way up the tech tree toward what is probably the bread and butter of the Japanese destroyer class, the Minikaze at tier 5. It uh, only gets better until then, and then unfortunately, past the Minikaze, it kind of only gets worse and worse uh, as you go up the Japanese destroyer tier tree uh, due to some f certain game factors uh, that Wargaming uh, has, you know, made us uh, let us know that they're aware of. And hopefully, as the game continues to be polished in open beta, uh, they'll be doing something about that. But anyway, on to the commander skills. Last time, we left off with the Tier 1 and Tier 2 commander skills, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the Tier 3 commander skills. Uh, now, as you go deeper and deeper in the tree, it's obviously going to take you more and more time to grind out the XP required to get 3, 4, and 5 commander skill points that you can then uh, purchase these skills with. And if course uh, to purchase a tier 5 skill you need to have purchased a tier 4 skill and to purchase a tier 4 skill you need to purchase a tier 3 skill and so on and so forth so by the time you get to tier 5 uh, your commander is going to have a lot of skill points that he's uh, used and or that he's acquired and used I should say so as far as tier 5 goes uh, unless you're playing a lot and I mean a lot, you're probably ever only going to have one tier 5 skill per commander. At least for now. Um, you know, we can revisit that in a couple of years, and we can look at all of you uh, people that have ground out this game, uh, and, and we'll see. You know, there's probably going to be uh, people with every skill unlocked. Uh, but that's going to take a lot of XP, because uh, as you put points into the skill tree um, or not even as you put points into the skill tree but as you gain skill points the next skill point you earn costs more and more and more experience on an exponential scale so it'll take a while but anyway on to the skills themselves under ship survivability the tier 3 skill is going to be high alert which pretty much just chops 10% off the reload time to your damage control party consumable damage control party is the button uh, I don't know what you have it bound to, but I believe it's R by default to that instantly repairs any modules that are broke. So, you know, if you get set on fire, or if you're flooding, or if uh, a turret has gone down, or if your engine has received critical damage, uh, you press R and all that is repaired. Uh, so it's a very, very useful ability. And having 10% off the reload time of that is uh, beautiful as well. This, again, um, I the ship's survivability column for me is... Uh, probably the most important column in the entire commander skill tree just because if your ship is dead you can't use any of the other skill points so I like keeping my ship alive uh, so it can actually fight and contribute to the battle and uh, if your ship's not alive in the match then what's the point of having these other skills because you can't use them so I focus on keeping my ship alive first and foremost and then branch out into what uh, its main role is going to be Concealment and Acquisition column, the Tier 3 skill is Vigilance. This is 20% to Acquisition range of torpedoes. A lot of people get confused by this and the wording. This is not, I repeat, this is not adding 20% range 
on to your torpedoes. This is letting you see enemy torpedoes in the water 20% further away than you would normally be able to. Now, the acquisition range of a torpedo normally is a percentage of that torpedo's max range, which is partially why the higher tier Japanese uh, destroyers are, are so bad, because they have such long range torpedoes, the enemy ships are able to see them from much further away uh, than normal. But this skill, if you have it, lets you see torpedoes in the water 20% uh, further away than normal. So if you are a battleship and you're constantly getting hit by torpedoes and you're not very aware or you have slow reaction times to when you do see torpedoes and the little indicator pops up, this might be a skill for you. This gives you 20% more time to actually observe those torpedoes, get the alert, and then start your maneuver to avoid them. The Tier 3 aircraft skill is Dogfighting Expert. Basically, this is mm, its probably the weakest of the actual aircraft skills on the tree because it has a very specific time when it, uh, when it kicks in. This doesn't improve your fighters across the board. This only gives your fighters a boost to their offensive uh, capabilities when they're fighting enemy fighters that have a higher cruise speed than them. So basically, the way it'll work uh, nine times out of ten is if you're fighting higher tier enemy fighters. Uh, then this will kind of even the odds a little bit, but you're still probably going to lose more fighters than, uh, you know, down fighters you got to inflict on them. But this doesn't, it's not a temporary, or it's not a, a across the board increase to your, to your fighter's capability. Even it's not a across the board increase to your fighter's capability when they're fighting any other fighter. It's only when they're fighting enemy fighters that have a higher cruise speed than them. So it's very specific when this perk kicks in, which is why it's kind of, you know, one of the the, the worst perks in the entire uh, uh, perk tree. Special skills, uh, the tier three, which is the first uh, commander skill in, in special skills column, basically gives you an additional charge to all of your consumables. So this is gonna be things like destroyer smoke screen, destroyer speed burst, focused AA fire on cruisers, and the, the battleship heal uh, ability. This gives you an additional charge to those consumables. Uh, I believe this also affects, uh, if you have premium consumables mounted, this should give you an additional charge of them as well. Uh, this is gonna be very helpful for, I think, uh, any ship that uses its special skills. So, uh, you know, any ship that's not an aircraft carrier. Uh, at tier three, this would definitely be the first or second uh, thing that I'd be choosing. Kind of a toss up between the high alert. I like having negative 10% to reload time of the damage control party. I think I would take this over this, uh, unless I'm in a battleship. If I'm in a battleship, I'm probably taking high alert first and then taking this for the battleship heal. If I'm in a cruiser or if I'm in a destroyer, I'm probably taking super attendant first just to get that focused AA fire extra charge and get an extra charge of smoke screen uh, because unfortunately in this patch, smoke screen has been gutted. So having an extra one uh, helps out a little bit more. Tier four in the artillery, we have Demolition Expert, which basically just gives you a plus 3% chance to set a target on fire um, with your HE shells if you're in a service ship or with your dive bombers if you're an aircraft carrier. Pretty basic, but pretty nice. 3% chance to fire. Fires uh, do uh, a lot of damage if you can set them. In the secondary armament, we have Advanced Fire Training, which increases the attack distance of small caliber armament so this is 20% fire range to all guns with a caliber up to 155 millimeter. This is gonna be really helpful on uh, cruisers with six inch and lower guns, because those are 152 millimeter guns. And then this also gives you plus 20% to AA defense firing range. So this is kind of the bread and butter cruiser skill. Um, this will also help out your secondaries on higher tier cruisers and battleships. And again, this is that plus 20% to AA firing range. Uh, really helps out with creating that uh, anti-aircraft screen that cruisers so desperately want to do. And also, if you're in a battleship, this will help out your secondaries as well and uh, give you, uh, you know, some capability to shoot down planes better uh, on your own as well. The ship survivability module tier four is going to be last stand. But basically, this is a this is a hell of a perk. Um, really, again, I think uh, one of the better perks. I, I'm going to say that about all of the ship survivability perks because, again, this column is is what I 
uh, think is probably one of the best columns uh, in, in the whole tree. Um, basically, this means that if your engine or steering gets critically hit, normally they'd be knocked out, which normally means that if your steering gets knocked out, your rudder is stuck in whatever position it was at when your steering get knocked out. So if it's uh, to the left or to the right at all, you're going to be going in circles. And if your engine gets critically damaged, your engine usually gets knocked out, which means you'll slowly just drift to a stop, and you won't be able to, to you know, go forwards or backwards uh, until your engine is repaired. Last stand basically means that when they get critically damaged, they don't actually get knocked out all the way. You can still operate both your rudder and your engine. You just have to operate them at a penalty. So you'll not accelerate as fast as normal. You'll not slow down as fast as normal. You'll not churn as fast as normal. But you'll actually still be able to accelerate, decelerate, and churn. Whereas normally you wouldn't be able to do those things with a critically damaged rudder or engine. This is going to be a brilliant perk for any destroyer captain because you're going to be taking so many HE shells. And normally, at least in my experience, I would say uh, on the plus side of 50% of the time when you get hit by an HE shell, anywhere towards the rear of your ship, it's going to take out either your engine or your steering. Um, and this will allow you to actually you know, make it into concealment, make it into cover, maybe make it into your smoke screen, make it around an island or make it back out of your spotting distance uh, to re-stealth yourself while you wait for those modules to repair. So this is, this is really a hell of a commander skill to have, and I'd highly recommend it on any ship, but especially destroyers. The aircraft air servicing expert, basically if you're an aircraft carrier, uh, this ups your aircraft carrier, this ups your uh, plane squadron HP for all of your, your aircraft, uh, and this also has a negative 10% to servicing time of all aircraft. So it allows you to get your aircraft uh, back in the air sooner after they land on your aircraft carrier and are being serviced. Finally, tier five in the artillery perk, we have last chance. Basically, when your ship is under 20% HP, you knock 9% off the reload time to all types of armament. So AP, HE, uh, torpedoes, doesn't matter. If your ship is below 20%, then you have a negative percent or negative 9% reload time. So uh, just allows you to up your DPM that much better and can maybe turn the tides if you're in a one-on-one -on -one service battle um, and you get knocked down to 20% uh, first. Um, maybe he's at like 30 or 40%. You can reload uh, before he reloads and then maybe you know aim for the Citadel with the AP if you're able to pen and uh, take him out before he takes you out. So. Um, pretty specific scenarios, this is useful, but still pretty good perk. In the ship survivability column, preventative maintenance, <laughs> again, like I said, uh, ship survivability I'm big on, and it just seems like all of the skills in this are a little bit better than their peers. Negative 34% chance to the incapacitation modules. Basically, anytime you get hit with HE, or get a crit with uh, AP that might, you know, do module damage, or, you know, get hit with uh, dive bombers or whatever, it basically cuts the chance of you losing that module in a th to, for, for a third. That's that's huge. That's you know, that's losing turrets. That's losing steering. That's losing uh, propulsion. That's losing AA guns. That's losing secondary batteries. Uh, cut down anything, any any chance of any module being incapacitated by a third. It's beautiful. It's big. Uh, this is useful on pretty much every ship, probably except aircraft carriers, uh, because if they're getting shot at they're probably dead anyway um but for all the other surface ships that's huge um what can there's not a lot more said about it uh in the concealment and acquisition uh column concealment expert is the rank five one this basically depending on what ship class you're in lowers your detectability rating so you can see it destroys 10 percent all the way up to 16 percent for aircraft carriers so if you like to play uh sneaky sneaky play style uh, this is really useful. This is uh, probably more useful on most destroyers and then some of the higher tier cruisers, um, which have pretty low concealment ratings to begin with, can really utilize this to uh, to become even more sneaky. And if you look at the higher tiers, if we go over to the Arkansas, because it has access to all the upgrades, if you look, one of the uh, highest tier upgrades is actually concealment system modification, which is negative 10% detectability. And you can actually couple that with this commander perk. So, for example, on that Arkansas, the battleship, if I had that upgrade installed, that's negative 10%. And then if I had this installed, that's negative 14%. So 
So I could cut that Arkansas's detectability rating down by 24% with just those two items. So if you really like to play sneaky at the higher tiers when you have access to that uh, high tier upgrade, uh, you can really couple these two things together, both the upgrade and the commander skill, to make your uh, your ships really extra sneaky. In the aircraft column, we have air supremacy, which just adds a fighter and a bomber to your squadrons. Pretty self-explanatory there. Pretty nice. And then in the special skills, we have jack of all trades, which is a negative 10% to reload time of all mounted consumables. So whereas this one gave you an additional charge of all your consumables, this one just lowers the reload time of all your consumables. Again, this would probably be uh, just like in tier three. I would probably go like high alert and then uh, superintendent for most of my super ships. In tier five, I'd probably go preventative maintenance and then jack of all trades for most of my surface ships because having that negative 10% reload time to your heal if you're in a battleship to your focus AA if you're in a cruiser or to your smoke screen and uh, acceleration boost if you're in a destroyer I uh, really can uh, make a break and this again increases the tactical flexibility that you're able to have uh, you know this is this is nice but this is only useful in uh, certain scenarios where this is going to be useful all game uh, whenever you use one of those matter consumables. So that's uh, going to be it for a quick look at the uh, last three tiers of the commander skills. And we're going to go ahead and actually jump in to some low tier destroyer gameplay uh, featuring our tier two Japanese, cr not cruiser, uh, Japanese destroyer, the Umikaze. Uh, and looking at it, the first thing you're going to want to do if you have any free XP lying around at all, and this is going to be pretty much true of uh, almost any. Japanese destroyer. You want to upgrade the hull and then upgrade to these uh, tier 2 torpedoes right away. It's the first thing you want to do. The reason being, if you take a look at the concealment, which you can see is 97, hell of a concealment rating. All the Japanese destroyers are pretty sneaky. But you can see its surface detectability range is 5.6 kilometers. We're not going to worry about air detectability range because at these low tiers, there's not going to be a lot of aircraft running around. But the surface detectability range is 5.6 kilometers. That means you can get within 5.6 kilometers of an enemy ship before it spots you. Before you actually render on the water and it's able to, you know, start taking shots at you. Now, why you want to upgrade your torpedoes is because if you look at the default torpedoes you come with, their range is only 4.5 kilometers. Uh, what this means is that you actually have to get within spotting distance of an enemy ship before you can shoot your torpedoes at them which is not gonna be great for you because most of the ships that you're gonna be going up against are gonna have a lot of guns and they're gonna be, uh, if, if you come within range, they're probably gonna be pointed at you and you don't have the armor, you don't have the HP. Uh, you can see only 10,300 HP with absolutely no armor to speak of um, on this destroyer uh, to, to withstand, you know, I, I, I would probably posit uh, 10 hits and you're gonna be dead. So, you do want to be coming within 5.6 kilometers of enemy ships. What the upgraded torpedoes allow you to do, if you look at their torpedo range, not only do they increase the damage that you do from 6133 to 6800, and not only do they move faster, which allows you to lead less than allows you to hit more targets, they also have a torpedo range of eight kilometers which means that you can, at all times, stay without of spotting distance and fire torpedo salvos at enemy. Now, you probably don't want to be firing torpedoes at 8 kilometers because it's really hard to hit torpedoes at their max range. Um, but you can get, you know, 6 kilometers away and still be unspotted and, and fire torpedoes at enemy ships. And at 6 kilometers, you have a pretty damn good chance at hitting them uh, with those torpedoes. And that's the general gist of Japanese destroyers. Is you want to be making sure that you're uh, having torpedoes mounted that shoot farther than your detectability range, and then you want to be staying out of detectability range while you fire torpedo salvos at the enemy. Uh, Japanese destroyers do have surface guns, obviously. Um, there's no surface ship in the game that doesn't have surface guns, I don't believe. Um, but the guns on Japanese destroyers, A, take a really long time to churn, and B, they fire, their rate of fire is really slow. At least until you get to the very highest tiers of the Japanese destroyers, but even then, they don't hold a candle to the American destroyers as far as surface battery effectiveness. So the Japanese destroyers are all about staying out of detectability range and using your torpedoes. And while you're out of detectability range, 
uh, make sure you're not firing your guns. Because you can see your main battery firing range is 6.7 kilometers. So if you're coming in at an enemy ship, let's say there's an enemy ship out here, you know, uh, and you get within 8 kilometers, you can start firing your torpedoes. You get within 6.7 kilometers, you can start firing your guns. Now, you're still not going to be spotted at 6.7 kilometers, but if you fire your guns, you will be revealed because firing your main battery uh, does increase your detectability range by a preset amount, uh, and it's, it's pretty large. So at 6.7 kilometers, firing your guns will actually reveal you, and again, that's a no-no in Japanese destroyers. So let's go ahead and jump into a match and see what happens and I'll see if I can't uh, demonstrate in-game some of those properties that we talked about as far as staying out of detectability and using your torpedoes to great effect. If you need to, if you get surprised, or if it's, you know, if you're, if you're uh, flanking a ship, uh, you, you can use your surface guns. I mean, they're there. Uh, don't feel like y you should never use them, uh, but they should definitely be a last resort for you. So without further ado, let's jump into battle and uh, see what happens. All right, so here we are in the battle lobby. And as you can see, this is still a tier one and tier two match, uh, which is going to be pretty great for us. There's only destroyers on the enemy team. Enemy team are, are the tier one cru cruisers, uh, mostly Japanese, but that doesn't really matter. Um, this is really nice because uh, neither the tier one nor the tier two cruisers on either side. Side, I mean, they're pretty maneuverable, uh, but they're not the most maneuverable things, and we uh, should be able to get some good torpedo salvos in. Um, and also their guns, especially on the tier one cruisers, for both the Erie and the Hashidate, their guns aren't the most uh, dangerous things uh, to worry about. So this should be a pretty good match for us. As we start out, we're probably gonna go ahead and speed ahead here uh, over to the, was that E4 to G6 area? You know, that little like nook over on the island. I've made a couple of destroyer videos before where I showcased what you can do over in this area. And the reason uh, I like to go over here in Destroyer first and foremost is because there's just so many islands to play with uh, that you can really keep hard cover if you need it in between you and the enemy. And if uh, enemy, any of these uh, cruisers, hopefully the Chester, is uh, dumb enough to come in this area, uh, it really allows some good torpedo lanes uh, for you to uh, shoot torpedoes at people. And sometimes you can ambush them coming around islands. Mostly in American destroyers would be more uh, useful over here because they need the hardcover. Um, but you can still actually just use your torpedoes to ambush people. Let's say, for example, there was a uh, ship that was on this side of the island and he was steaming over here from left to right. And I could shoot torpedoes like right there when the lead indicator got there. And if he stayed on course, uh, he wouldn't ever see those torpedoes coming because there would be hardcover between him and the torpedoes. And then as soon as he popped out of the island, they'd be slumming into his side and totally taken by surprise. So you don't need to ambush people with your ship. You can also ambush them with torpedoes in general, just by firing torpedoes in a smart direction, in a smart way. Um, one of the main things uh, to keep in mind, especially at these lower tiers, if you haven't really played with a lot of torpedoes before, is make sure when you're firing torpedoes, uh, you're not firing them into enemy ships. So, for example, let's say that that Hashidate out there was an enemy. If I fired torpedoes, like, right now, they had a, they'd have a very good chance of hitting that friendly Chikuma, which is something that you don't want to be doing. You can see that there's a Chester, uh, just like I hoped, coming into this area. And you'll see at 8 kilometers, we'll actually be able to lock onto him and uh, get the torpedo lead indicator. Just like that. So you can see where the lead indicator is. So we're going to stick to the back here. Again, we want to stick out of spotting range. And it seems like, given their positioning, they're shooting right down the four line. Which means that as soon as we get around this island, maybe we can shoot some torpedoes up the four line. And uh, get a good spread of damage going onto them. Which would be helpful and nice. Now he is charging me. So I'm going to go ahead and pop smoke as I'm pop coming around this island to keep myself concealed. Smoke I'm going to generator started. lower my speed because you're actually, uh, the smoke will envelop you if you're going slow. And we're going to wait. We're going to see if this Chester holds course. If he does, we might be able to ambush him Smoke's just like set. I was talking about. Around, nope, he's starting to churn. He's starting to churn. Which means as soon as this guy's clear, we're going to anticipate his turn. Fire torpedoes there. Fire torpedoes there. We're actually going to full reverse and press our speed boost to get the hell out of here and get back in the smoke. Engine boost activated. Because, uh, yeah, that's going to happen. 
unfortunately. Hopefully we can survive this, and hopefully some of our torpedoes hit, and we're able to get back into our smoke screen and get back into this hard cover. And uh, by the time we clear this island, our torpedoes should be back up, and maybe we can take some more shots at him. So you can see just how, oh, he wants to come this way. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to go forward. And while he's focusing on that Chikuma, we're actually going to take this guy out. Because if he stays in this direction, uh, he's not going to have any chance to avoid these torpedoes whatsoever. And he's going to go down right now. And uh, so he made a mistake actually charging through a narrow gap at me. And uh, now, while this Chikuma is uh, focused on this guy, we'll actually come over here and start using this hardcover as well as we wait for our torpedoes to reload. You know, fire some guns, the limited guns that we have. Set them on fire, why not? I'm actually not even going to use my torpedo reload here because we're able to take him out. Um, but now we really need to get the hell out of here um, because we're getting charged by a lot of ships. So we'll uh, put some distance between us and that enemy destroyer that was in there. It was spotting us out. There he is. Nope, we're already out of spotting distance. So, there you go. That's uh, just... Oh, no, here we go. We got another Chikuma right here. We'll see if we can't close off and close off as he's turning. He's going to start to turn to avoid those torpedoes. But while our guns are over here, we'll fire some salvos at him and then see if we can't get out of here. We got caught on fire. Um, so, we'll go ahead and put that out. As he's turning, we'll keep maneuvering. We'll keep maneuvering. Our torpedoes are going to be up in five seconds. We'll get some a AP into there, see if we can't get some signals, but no. I don't think it's going to happen. We're just back up, though. So we'll get him a parting gift. He set us on fire again because he's shooting the, uh, the AP. We'll see if we can't use this little spit of land as some hardcover while our torpedoes do good work against him. Yep, just like that, he gets taken out. Uh, now this Hashidare, unfortunately, is still within uh, spotting range of us, so uh, we'll have to go ahead and hopefully he doesn't uh, take us out right away. We'll uh, wildly maneuver, wildly maneuver, wildly maneuver. As we're getting burned down by the fire, hopefully those miss. Nope, they did hit us. Our uh, fire's going to be out in 13 seconds, but he's dead, so we uh, do live. Thankfully. Unless this fire somehow burns down. Uh, in the next, no, we should be, we should be good to go. Okay, so that was pretty exciting, but you can see, again, uh, a lot of uh, enemies, and I would recommend if you're not a destroyer, just, just avoid this area of the map. Th there's no reason to come in here. I mean, if you look at where the cap point is, it's not anywhere near this ending of the map. Yeah, go fight in the uh, top right-hand corner, and uh, stick, you know, from like the uh, six line on over to the ten line. Um, but if you are in a destroyer and you're able to utilize your smoke screen and utilize hardcover and enemies are dumb enough to start charging through these narrow channels at you, uh, you can get really good work done. I mean, really good work done um, by using your torpedoes. And at these lower tiers, the torpedo uh, reload is such that, uh, yeah, you can, you can take on ship after ship after ship if they're kind of staggering their approach towards you uh, like you were able to see me do there. So, we are 13 minutes into the game. You can see we have five torpedo hits, three ships sunk. One of those is actually with our surface batteries. Uh, five shell hits, two fires set, two floodings done, a uh, critical hit done, and then two of whatever these are. Devastating Strike, Battle Hero Award. Yay, that's cool. Uh, so now, as it's eight to four, and the rest of their team is up here in the top right-hand corner, We'll just go into the cap and uh, see what we can do as we're charging towards these guys. See if we can't get uh, some more torpedo salvos off along the eight to uh, you know, seven kilometer range before our ships sink them with their service batteries. Probably not going to be able to get any more damage done uh, this game, but we can at least try, you know, and be here in a supporting position for these guys in case things start to go horribly, horribly wrong. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and cut to starboard here and go behind these guys. And there's that Umikaze, my counterpart on the enemy team. Um, now, I can't... This is an example of where you wouldn't want to be firing before. torpedoes at the enemy uh, because there's a lot of friendly ships in between me and the enemy. That torpedo should miss us. Uh, so definitely hold your fire in that scenario. But uh, we'll see if we can't uh, go sink this enemy. Unikaze. Unikaze? Umikaze. Uh, before we uh, win the game. 
This Hashidate is probably not going to be coming in front of that island. Yeah, looking at the mini-map, and he just got sunk anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Now, I still have the AP loaded because, again, at these lower tiers... Oh, this guy looks like he might be coming in front of that island. He's turning. He's trying to anticipate his turn. And uh, just take some long-range torpedo salvo shots at him. And uh, I have a feeling that the enemy Umikaze is going to be behind this island. So I'm going to actually go ahead and pop my smoke right now and get that uh, screen set up. Started. Hopefully that Chikuma does not run into those torpedoes. Uh, they should clear his bow. And then maybe we'll get some... Uh, yep, there he is. So unfortunately, this is probably going to be my demise unless I can get a good Citadel hit on this guy right now. I'm going to keep turning, keep turning, try to avoid these, try to avoid these, try to avoid these. It's not going to happen. And I go down. So... I figured he was probably behind that island. I probably, in hindsight, man, got, the, <laughs> got, got that uh, cruiser in the long-range torpedo salvo anyway. Um, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have fired those and held my torpedoes uh, for that guy because I was probably anticipating him being there. And uh, I probably could have gotten the jump on him with my torpedo salvo because he took a little while to fire his torpedoes at me. Um, but at that close range, even with the maneuverability of destroyers, you can see I could dodge three of them, uh, but not the fourth. And I was on such low health that one torpedo was going to kill me. If I was at full health, that torpedo wouldn't have killed me. And uh, my torpedoes had just come back up, and I probably would have been able to take him out. Or, uh, you know, the combination of torpedoes and hopefully Citadel hits. Um, but it didn't really matter. I could afford to play a little risky there, because even though I died... You know, at that point, it was, what, 8 to 2, and we had all of our ships in the cap circle, so there really wasn't any way we were going to lose the match, so you could afford to play a little risky, and uh, I still got that uh, enemy cruiser with that long-range torpedo salvo anyway, so it was, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of a wash. Um, so looking at the results of this match, you can see we got 5 hits with our guns, 6 hits with the torpedoes, 1 critical damage, 4 ships destroyed, 2 ships set on fire, 3 flooding costs. Look at our battle hero wards. It's just a flesh room. Which is destroy any enemy ship after your ship has been destroyed. So we got destroyed, and then our torpedo salvo hit. And then we got the devastating strike, which is destroy an enemy ship with a single artillery salvo, torpedo salvo, or aircraft attack, by causing over 50% of the destroyed ship's normal HP. So basically, taking a ship down from 50% to zero uh, with one salvo of any kind of uh, weapon in the game. If we look at the team score, uh, we can come out at the top of the list with a 986 base experience. Um, now, given that these are low tiers, and then given that Wargaming has actually kind of redone the economy and redone the grind, I'm going to have to amend what I've said in the previous videos. Uh, I used to say that a 1,000 uh, base experience was the mark that you should be shooting for. Because they have lowered the experience gain across the board, I'm going to go ahead and posit that right around five to 600 is base experience is what you should be shooting for. 750 is a good game, and a thousand experience is going to be a great game. As this is again talking base experience, um, so you can see pretty close to a great game with four enemy ships destroyed. Came up top of the leaderboard, and that's just the power of what you can do with a destroyer in kind of a narrow area using your sneakiness, using hardcover, using smoke, using your mobility. And using your pretty low concealment rating. Because even though those ships got pretty close, we were able to take them out and then zoom around and get right back out of that 5.6 kilometer concealment rating uh, and, and stay safe and stay alive. If you look at the detailed report, you can see 12 uh, shots fired, two AP shell hits for 1,700 or 1,071 damage. So I know a lot of people uh, say HE is God, HE is God. But uh, the reason they say that is because. Um, it's, it's generally the safer bet, especially when you get to higher and higher tiers, but there's actually going to be an armor variety in between the type of ships that you're shooting at. But I, I still say down here at the low tiers where it's low caliber guns going up against ships with no armor, low caliber guns shooting AP are not going to over penetrate anything. And ships having no armor means that even low caliber AP shells probably aren't going to bounce. So you can see that you can uh, really, really do a lot of good work. Both those AP shots that hit penetrated, and they did over 500 damage a shot. Whereas if you look at the HE shells that we fired, we did three for 707, or 676, so it was like 200 damage a shot. So I'm going to take 500 damage a shot over 200 damage a shot any day. Now we did set a couple of fires and do 103 damage with the fire, uh, but that's still, even with the fire set, 
doesn't make uh, the HE do any more damage in this scenario than the AP did. So don't forget about your AP shells, and at the low tiers, I would recommend shooting AP. Just make sure you're shooting from the vital parts of the ship. Don't be hitting the things on top. Be going in through the side of the hole as close to the waterline as possible and trying to get good penetrations and citadels if you can. You can see we launched 20 torpedoes, 6 hits for over for almost 30,000 damage. And we didn't do anything with secondaries. Uh, upgraded, this ship doesn't actually have secondaries anymore. It does have secondary guns and uh, stock configuration, but once you upgrade the hull, the secondaries go away. But you do get an extra main battery, which is nice. And then obviously, we didn't do anything with our aircraft. Uh, we damaged five ships, we sunk four ships. And then credits and XP. And so we earned 154,000 credits. Um, this is with a premium account. Even without a premium account, we would have earned 120,000 credits. So a pretty good money-making match game. And then uh, because this was a premium account, we did get 1,479 XP off of the 986 base XP. Uh, this was not 1.5 for the first one in the day because I had already won in this ship earlier. But still, 1,479 XP. Nothing to shake your head at. 986 base XP. Again, uh, 1,000 base XP, I'm going to say, is going to be a pretty great game uh, going forward at this point in time. So, to recap, low tier Japanese destroyer. Make sure you get torpedoes that exceed your uh, spotting distance so you can fire stealth torpedo salvos. And then make sure that as much as possible, you're trying to stay out of uh, spotting range and stay concealed throughout the match. Go to areas of the map where there are going to be choke points that you can, you know, shoot your torpedoes down lanes where there's going to be limited maneuverability for the enemy ships to dodge them. And then make sure that you're also using your smoke and using your hard cover when you can to stay safe during the match. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, uh, going over both the uh, last of the commander skills and then also some tips for some low-tier destroyer gameplay. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave a comment down below, and uh, I will see you next time.